We're going to be in Isaiah chapter 58. Uh, my, my goal was, uh, was to finish this up, and, and uh, last week things got um, a little bit skewed, all right? And let me say I am so thankful that uh, I was able to call Harold. I was in the emergency room, and I, I'm laying down there, and I'm going, oh! And all of a sudden I thought, oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to preach. And uh, so Karen was out in the waiting room because we had the grandkids last weekend, right? So they got to take a field trip to the Bronson Battle Creek emergency room at 4 in the morning. It was great. <laughs> ah. And so I'm in there, and I have my phone, and I messaged Karen. I said, you know, it might be a good idea if, if you can call Harold and, and see if, if he can preach because I just don't think I'm going to be able to. And so I put my phone down because all of a sudden I was hurting and the drugs kicked in and whew, I was out and that just felt really good. So I came, I came to a few minutes later and I look at my phone and Karen's going, hello, is this thing on? I don't have Harold's number in my phone. So I said, okay, I got this. And I called Harold and he was so gracious just to say, don't worry, I got this. We're praying for you, get better. And uh, so I really appreciate Harold doing that. Isaiah chapter 58 talks about what true fasting is. And here several weeks ago, uh, we talked about uh, the problems. We talked about the people's pressure. And really what they were saying was, I fast, I do this, I do that. Um, in other words, God, you've given me a list of things to do. And so I'm doing it. So uh, where's the payoff? How about that? God, you said to do this and this and this. I've done it, but how come you are not blessing me for doing this? Okay, so it all comes down to this. Remember, uh, God doesn't want ritual, does he? God wants relationship. God wants you to love him and to serve him for who he is, not for what he does for you. First and foremost, and, and the song this morning, uh, an excellent reminder of that, we remember that God is holy, and we start there. But we don't serve God for what we can get, but rather because we love him. And here in Isaiah chapter 58, uh, let's see here, let's uh, go to uh, verse yeah, let's go to verse 3. Why have we fasted, and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. What's the problem? What's in it for me? You've told me to do this, but oh, what am I going to get out of it? And you know what? Culture today tells us that, doesn't it? Okay? Our culture today says, okay, I will do this and this, but I'm going to look at the bottom line before I make a decision. What's the payoff? What am I going to get out of this? Let me share something with you. The spiritual disciplines are a wonderful thing, and fasting is one of them. Okay? Uh, is fasting important? Absolutely. If you don't believe me, the number one reason it's so important is because God said it's important. And so we need to actively be doing that. So fasting is very important, but don't fast just to tell your neighbor, hey, look at me, uh, I just fasted. God doesn't want ritual. God wants your obedience. The time of fasting is meant not to tell your neighbor what you did, but rather to grow closer to God. And so let me say this. As you are fasting, okay, the payoff isn't, okay, God, I fasted, so now give me what I want. Your heart's desire should be to be like God. That should be what you want. That's why you fast, so that you have that commitment to relationship with him. That should be why we fast. Here in Isaiah chapter 58, we fasted, we've done all of these things, yet we're not getting what we want. You're not hearing me. I've done all of these things. 
You know, God is not like a, um, uh, one of those things where you put a quarter in and it, it just spits out an answer, right? That's not what fasting is all about. That's not what prayer is all about. Um, this last week, there was a Powerball frenzy going on. You couldn't escape it, right? And so at work, at work the other day, uh, everybody's going, well, I wonder if I'm going to win the Powerball. And I looked at them and I said, oh, no, I don't think so. I said, do you know what the odds are, first of all? And they said, well, yeah, but it, it's going to happen to somebody. It could be me. Uh, uh, I heard of some people spending thousands of dollars on Powerball tickets. All right. Um, yeah, so what happened? Okay, did the people that I work with, did they win? You know how I know they didn't win? They showed up to work the next day. All right, they were there. They didn't win. And I heard some people say, well, boy, I, I wish I really would have won and I wish I would have done this and I would have done that. L listen, life isn't lived that way, isn't it? You know what, I'm so thankful. And Karen and I, we had this very discussion as my bride and I were sitting down. We looked around our house, and again, we have, we have a small house. Molly, our dog, she lays down in the living room on the floor. I tripped over her twice this week. My living room is small. There was no room to go around her. And I tripped over her, okay? Small house. You know what? Karen and I, we were just praising God. We have a nice house. We have a roof over our heads. What would I do with all that money? I don't know. I have a nice house. My dogs tore up my backyard. I can fix that without, without all that money. You know what? God has given me everything that I need. God has given me everything. I don't need all of that. I don't want all of that. Can you imagine what their life is going to... Oh, I don't even want to go there. You know what? It's going to be awful. Here it is. God gives us what we need, and he gives us what we need when we recognize that God knows what my needs are more than I know what my needs are. How's that? We all think we need this and this and this. You know what? God doesn't say, I'm going to give all of this stuff to you. He says, do you trust me? And when we get to the point where we say, God, I trust you, you know what? That is going to be more liberating than any amount of money the world can give you. Why? I don't put my trust in the almighty dollar. I put my trust in God. How is it I can get to that point where I put my faith and my trust in God totally for my every need? It is by growing closer to him. It is by God revealing his glory to me daily. How is that done? It is done through spending time with him. It is done through fasting. It's not what you can get. It's all about growing in grace and knowledge of him. And so it's very important that we take the, uh, take the time to hear God better. It's all about taking the time. And let's face it, time is something that is very fleeting for all of us, isn't it? You know, how many of you all are busy people? Um, for those people that are retired, you should be putting both hands up. <laughs> nice jersey, by the way. Okay, don't tell Corey I said that, but nice jersey. Okay. You know, it seems like when you retire, all of a sudden you're even more busy than what you were when you were working. That's what I hear. I'm not there yet. I got a long time. I got 14 years and seven months, but who's counting? Anyway, we're all busy people, okay? Whether you're working, you're at home, our schedules fill up quickly, okay? Taking the time to hear from God starts with us taking the time. Fasting, a wonderful discipline to take the time to hear from God, to hear what he is saying to you. We talked about the proper pattern for fasting. Why, why do we fast? And in verses 6 and 7, it says, It's not the fast which I choose to loosen the bonds of wickedness, undo the bands of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. And we talked about those verbs and what it is to break free of things. You know what? God wants us to break free of the affairs of this world and to follow him. Okay? And so when we're talking about Powerball, and I'm just going to use this as an example because it's been so prevalent 
And that's all I heard just the entire, just the entire couple of weeks. I mean, it was crazy. When we're talking about Powerball, you know what? It, it's not about... It's not about winning this Powerball. It's not about everything that goes into all of that. It is about uh, breaking strongholds. And let me just say, to me, Powerball is one of those strongholds, one of those things that strangles us. Okay, that's a whole other message, and we may get there sooner or later, okay? But God wants us, and He desires for us to break away from those things that hold us back in, in taking delight in his glory. So whatever that may be, whether it's Powerball, whether it's, whether it's something that you're doing, it might be something that you're not doing, that you know you should be doing. Breaking those yokes of oppression that the world puts on you so that you can wholeheartedly follow Jesus Christ. That is the pattern of fasting. That is, is what it means to listen to what God is telling us and to go and to do those things. God calls us to be a people that isn't, live, isn't living bound by the world but is living in the Spirit. Okay? And the book of Ephesians talks all about that. Remember in, in the book of Ephesians it says, Do not be drunk with wine but what? Be filled with the Spirit, right? Okay, so, so very often we stop right there. And that's a great verse. It really is. But if you look further on into the rest of Ephesians 5 and Ephesians 6, it explains what it means to be filled by the Spirit. And if you are going to be filled by the Spirit, that means you are not going to be entertaining what the world has to offer, but rather... You are going to be living by the Spirit of God. How do you do that? You do that through prayer and fasting. You do that through having an intimate relationship with a God who is holy, holy, holy. Isn't it? It's mind-blowing to me that a God who is holy, holy, holy wants to have that type of relationship with me. Am I holy, holy, holy? I am dressed in the righteousness of God, amen? But I'm not holy, holy, holy. But yet here we have a holy God, creator God, who loves me so much he sent his son to die on a cross willingly for me. Guess what? He wants to know me. So very often we, we here will, will um, what's the word I'm looking for? We will put high on the pedestal so many figures in our culture today. I remember when, when Michael Jordan was just the craze. Do you all remember that? Yeah, I remember that. I, I remember watching him play ball and thinking, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, no, I couldn't. I remember thinking, boy, that would just be really cool. I remember thinking, boy, I'd really like to meet him. Wow, the, he's just amazing. He's, and I don't even like to watch basketball. But to watch him is poetry in motion. Okay, Tiger Woods was another one when he was playing golf. You know what? Uh, one of the greatest golfers ever. Have I ever told you how much I enjoy golf? Have I ever told you that? No. There's a reason for that, because I do not enjoy playing golf. Putt-putt golf. Yeah, maybe. Okay? But to watch him, it was absolutely amazing. And I know so many people that would say, man, I would just love to meet him. We do that with actors and actresses, don't we? We do it with sports figures, <laughs> not politicians so much. I don't know why. Um, but we do it with so many different people. Okay? Let me tell you something. You know what? Instead of emulating Michael Jordan, uh, instead of being like Mike, as it is, can I say this? Our consuming desire and passion should be to be like Jesus Christ. Prayer and fasting. That is how we are not conformed to the world, but how we are transformed from the inside out by the very Spirit of God. So we want to look at verses 8 through 12. 
of Isaiah chapter 58. And it talks about the precious promises that we find when we take the time to hear God. And we do it as we are fasting. Verse 8, Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, your healing shall spring up speedily, your righteousness shall go before you, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, I love this, then you shall call and what? The Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. Wow! I love that. The, int- the uh, points at a time or the people who do those things uh, that are described here, it gives a blessing and insight into what will happen when we truly hear from God. Okay, remember, hearing from God, we don't do it for what we can get. We do it so that we can grow closer to him. Let me say this, there is great benefit in drawing closer to Jesus Christ. There is great benefit in recognizing that God is holy. Let me say this, let that be your reward. If you are praying and fasting that you will win the Powerball next time, Right on, Raj. If you're praying and you're fasting that you will win the Powerball next time, uh, that does not impress God. Let me tell you what God wants. God wants you to pray and to fast so that you become more like Him. Here is the reward that comes to us as we are faithful to God. There are four blessings here. Light, healing, guidance and protection. And then God's presence that is with us. Unless Christ is the center of your interest, of your life, the world is going to be a very dark place for you, isn't it? You know, I I think the other day I saw on the news we had had so many days without sunlight. Okay, I love sunlight. My office doesn't have a window at work. I hate that. So I went up to our administrator. Her office has a window because she's the boss. And she can have a window if she wants one. That's what she told me. I said, well, why don't you and I switch offices? I would, I'd like to have a window. She called me a naughty reverend and said I was just being silly and she sent me on my way. But we had all of this time. It was gloomy. There were times it was dark. You know what? The human body needs light. We, we do. I feel better. Don't you? I feel better when there is sunlight. I feel better when I can take in, uh, take in God's creation. And uh, the sunlight is God's creation. And our bodies, our bodies need that. You know what? It puts a little pep in my stat. And I like that. When Jesus Christ is not at the center of everything that we do, we find ourselves in a dark place. We find ourselves totally devoid. I call it the spiritual energy and not trying to be mystical, but we we find ourselves devoid of being aware of God's presence. Why? Because our focus and our mindset is off of Him. Light is important. God tells us in his word that as we get closer to him, as our focus is on him, gray skies are going to clear up. You know what? Outside they don't always clear up, do they? They don't always. But you know, in here they can. Have you all ever had a rough day? You feel like there's no light at the end of the tunnel? And then there are times where you see that light and it's an oncoming train. Things just went from bad to worse. Guess what God says? God says, trust me. He says, trust me. 
as you get to know who I am. Trust me. Spend time with him. It says that there will be healing and that it will be speedy healing. Now, you know what? We've had some folks in our congregation who, quite honestly, have kind of been through the ringer. LaVon, I look at you. We've prayed for you for a long time. We really have. You know what? Uh, we would like to say we prayed over her on a Saturday at 11 a.m. and by 11.05 she was running a marathon. You would have liked to have said that too, I reckon. Okay. Guess what? It doesn't always happen that way, does it? Let me share this with you. In the time span of eternity, speedy healing, right? God knows what he's doing, folks. God God knows. His calendar is way better than mine. And there are times where, I'll be honest with you, I have prayed and prayed and prayed for speedy healing. And you know what? Uh, For whatever reason, God has allowed those things to go on. The Apostle Paul prayed the same thing, didn't he? You know, he said, I have a thorn in the flesh. Okay? We don't really know what that thorn in the flesh was. Okay? Some people think it was his eyesight. Uh, that was bad because over and over again he said, I'm writing this in big, big letters, big strokes, because I can't see. <laughs> there were some that said, maybe the Apostle Paul was married. I'm not going to go there. Um, but he had this thorn in the flesh. And Paul said, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. But yet it is still here. I will glory in my infirmity if God can use it for his glory. You know what? As we fast and we pray, healing takes place. Is it always going to be physical healing right away? No, it's not. Oh, LaVon, I sure wish it was that way sometimes. I really do. But I do know this. Healing takes place in so many fantastic ways. We have physical healing. Oh, how we pray for that. We have emotional healing. You know what? Uh, uh, Emotional healing needs to take place. And for some, that can take a long time. For some, I have seen God's, uh, God's hand just reach down and touch people. It, we pray for emotional healing, for spiritual healing. Aren't you thankful that when God says he's the great physician, it covers all of us? He doesn't leave one little part of us untouched when it comes to healing. And as we fast and as we pray and as we know God better, Healing takes place. Verse 9 says, You will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry and he will say, Here I am. Isn't it great that when you know somebody intimately, when you call on them, they are right there. There's times when I'm at work and, and uh, yesterday, Judy, yesterday was the first day in weeks. I actually got out right on time. I'm supposed to leave at 4 o'clock. I had my coat on at 3.59. I called the person at the reception area. I said, I'm leaving. And she laughed. She thought I was kidding. I said, no, I'm not kidding. I'm leaving. I'm getting out while the getting's good. You see, normally, uh, Karen and I, we have an arrangement, right? 4 o'clock, she just goes out to the van. And she's got her phone and stuff and she's out there and she's waiting and she's waiting. And then she's waiting a little bit more and pretty soon she'll send a message and I don't have my phone so I'm not getting all of this but she'll say, "Um, how much longer are you going to be? What's going on? So about quarter to five she's she's starting to go, you know, I, I know you got stuff to do but man, come on, let's go. Right? So we're constantly going back and forth. And bless her heart. She says, you know what? This part of the job, I totally get it. I'm fine with it. I love the fact that we have that communication and that we can talk about those things. You know what? When when I have the right relationship with God and I am spending time with God and I am getting to know him intimately, guess what? God, where are you? What does he say? Here I am. I'm right here. I love the fact that I can go to him at any time And he says, 
here I am. You know, there are some times where I'll message Karen, she'll be in the van, and uh, she might be listening to music or something. And let, let, me, let me tell you a secret. When she listens to music, she gets into it, right? I might not get a message back right away, and that's perfectly okay. She might call me. There's been times she's called me at work, and I'm on the phone, and I don't get the message right away. Guess what? God's got this. Isn't it great to know? It says here that, that when I call you, you hear me. There, it doesn't take 20 minutes for him to get back to me. Um, I don't have to go through an answering service. Um, I don't have to leave a message. He is right there. You will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry and he will say, here I am. When you are hurting and you are crying out to God, be aware of his presence and know that he says, child, here I am. We have that assurance as we get to know God more, as we get to understand who he is. You will cry and he will say, here I am. Another one of the benefits of getting to know God through prayer and fasting is going to be this, is going to be we are given the ability to show compassion to those who are around us. We are given the joy of being able to serve those who need to know him. We are given the joy of being able to encourage one another. How many of y'all just love to be encouraged? Oh yeah, we all love that. Okay, so as you love to be encouraged, and you know what? Encouragement doesn't take very much, does it? I got an email from my boss the other day. It was two words. <laughs> it was two words. It said, nice job. I'm good with that. That was encouraging to me. We all love to be encouraged. It doesn't take much to be encouraged. As you love to be encouraged, when we get to know who God is, guess what? It makes it much easier for me not just to be encouraged, but in turn to encourage somebody else. God calls us to be a people of compassion. Verse 10, if you give yourself to the hungry, satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in darkness and your gloom will become like midday. We are called to meet the needs of other people and God gives us that love for other people so that we can do that. Remember, we're not trying to be like Mike. We're trying to be like Jesus Christ, right? And as God has loved me, I in turn get to share God's love with other people. God, give me a heart for people. Give me a heart for people. You see, it's not about programs. It's not about processes or anything like that. At the core, church is about people. Church is about loving God and loving others. Now, there's nothing wrong with programs, all right? There's nothing wrong with processes. They're tools. But we are here to meet the needs of people. Here within the congregation, outside the walls of this church, give yourself to showing compassion and meeting the needs of those who need to have needs met. Verse 11 says, And the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places and give strength to your bones when you are tired and when you feel like you have given everything that you can give. Guess what? God gives strength. Let's face it, some people, man, we really need strength to show compassion to, don't we? I'm just keeping it real. There are some people, it's just kind of tough to love them, right? Y'all are looking at me like, eh, I don't know what he's talking about. Yes, you do. <laughs> You'll cry at their funeral. You won't have them over for dinner, okay? You know exactly what I'm talking about. God, give me the compassion. To love them. God, give me the joy of being able to help meet their needs. 
even when I'm in that dry place, even when I'm not feeling that close to this situation, give me strength to my bones. It says you will be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Continuous refreshment that comes. You know what? I think God calls us to be an encouraging people. I think God calls us to be a compassionate people. But we don't get that just from looking within ourselves. Because that's not where it comes from. Where does that compassion come from? It comes from God's Word. It comes from God's Spirit. How do I get to know that? By spending time with Him. Fasting and prayer is so important, isn't it? It is, it is an important discipline that we need to take a part of. A true relationship with God is going to make a difference in how we relate to one another. It is going to make a difference in how I come across and showing love to other people. You see, it's not about what I can do, yet it's what I allow Christ to do in me and through me. A transformed life is going to begin when you know who God is, when you know what God has done. And I was sharing with our, with our deacons this morning as we were praying before the service, you know, one of, the, one of the, the best words to describe the Christian life and the transformation that takes place is when we simply say yes to God and we do what we're told to do. It's all about obedience. And I was sharing that with somebody at work and they said, man, you sure use that word a lot, obedience. We need to. Because it's all about what Christ has done in us and through us. Allow yourself to be used for God. Allow yourself to be transformed. Who are we going to be like? We're going to be like that which ignites our passion. Let Christ Ignite your passion. Get to know who He is. The spiritual disciplines. And we're going to be talking about some of those throughout the year this year. We're going to be talking about prayer. We're going to do some more on fasting, uh, I think, in June or July. Um, it's, it's absolutely critical that we do these things not because we have to, but because we love Him. And the benefits of that are out of this world. Number one benefit, I get to know my God even more. I get to allow Him to change me. And you know what? When I'm changed, and I'm changed in the right way, I'm able to show that change. I'm able to be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ and to have compassion to those who need it. Let's pray. Father, we thank You. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you tell us in your word that we, as we get to know you more, as we spend time, Lord, in prayer, as we spend time in fasting, as we spend time, Lord, denying ourselves with the purpose of getting to know you more. Father, as we do those things, Lord, our rewards are great. Not in just what you provide for us, but Father, our reward is found in the fact that we get to know you all the more. We get to say yes to you. Father, we get to be used by you. Lord, that, that is true reward. We thank you for your provision and your grace. And Father, in this season, as we... Uh, are getting ready to wrap up our time of, of fasting and as we have looked at the vision. Father, I pray that we have, that we have looked at a vision and Father, that we have asked where our place in vision is for us. Father, there's something for all of us to do. Father, I pray that you would be with us as a church in the decisions that we make. Lord, I pray that you would use us. Father, wherever you would have us be used, that we would 
be obedient. And Father, that we would be a part of the vision of this great family here. We thank you for how you have watched over us. Father, we're encouraged that when we cry out, you say, here I am. That tells me that you've never left. You are right here. And so, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.